Okay, so what we want to do is start uh, looking at these identities more. We've talked about identities, and I want to start off looking at some identities that we already know, and that is the reciprocal identities. And we begin looking at these right after we define the, the trig functions because we always looked upon or we noticed very quickly that when we defined sine and cosecant, we noticed they were reciprocals of each other. So what we do is we just formally state that, that sine theta is the same as 1 over uh, cosecant theta. So if sine is 1 half, we know that cosecant is 2, just reciprocal. Likewise, uh, cosecant theta equals 1 over sine theta. Okay. Now, we've got cosine theta equals 1 over secant theta secant theta then equals 1 over cosine theta, and tangent theta is 1 over cotangent theta, cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. Now, if you go to our web page, you'll see there's a list that I've typed out for you with the main identities that we need to focus on. So if you go to the teacherwalt.com and then go down to uh, the trig, you'll go over there and you'll see the identities page that you can click on. Okay, so these are called the reciprocal identities. Now let's look at the quotient identities. And uh, when we think of quotient identities, we think of tangent theta, which is sine theta over cosine theta. And that's one that we've explored before also. We've, we've noted that when we looked at the unit circle and defined sine to be the y and cosine to be the x, we noted that tangent was just sine over cosine. And likewise, cotangent theta equals cosine theta over sine theta. And we refer to those as the quotient identities because, you know, you've got a quotient there, sine over cosine and cosine over sine. Okay, so we've got the quotient identities now. These, uh, I want to look at three identities here that we've not really focused on much before. And then we'll look at the Pythagorean identities, and those will be the ones that we work on for a while before we introduce more. Now, if you notice, what I've done here is I've put the graph of sine, cosine, and tangent. And I want to make an observation about, first of all, sine. And you'll have to think back when we were in, in pre-calculus, when we were studying odd and even functions. And if you look at sine here, I don't know if, you know, that's a long time ago, but do you remember in classifying sine as either an odd or even function, what would it be, you think? Now, l notice this. Let me give you a hint. If we take the sine of theta over here, notice we get a positive number, right? What if we symmetrically go across the axis and take the negative of that angle? In other words, let's suppose we take the sine of theta over here, we get a positive. What about if we take the sine of negative theta? We get negative, right? In fact, we get exactly the opposite. See, you can see that from the graph. Do you see that it passes through the origin here? So while positive values of theta give us positive values of sine here, symmetrically those negative values of theta will give us the opposite. So note it, so this leads us to this identity. Sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. And that of course means that sine is an odd function. By definition, that's what an odd function is. So whenever you see sine of like negative pi over 2, or negative pi over 3, something like that, you can replace it with negative sine of pi over 3. Any questions about that? Now let's go to the next one and look at cosine. Now, notice, let's suppose that we're over here in the positive, have a, we have a positive value for theta, 
we take the cosine of theta. Notice we go up and we hit the graph and it's positive. What if we take the opposite of that value of theta? What do we get for the value of cosine of the negative theta? Now look, cosine theta we get this, negative cos uh, cosine negative theta we get this. So what do you get? What's the difference in cosine theta and cosine negative theta? Notice, look at the graph. Here's cosine theta. Here's cosine negative theta. There's no difference, right? Cosine is said to be an even function because if we take the cosine of negative theta, that's just the same as the cosine of theta. So cosine is an even function. Are there any questions about this? So let's see, what we have so far is uh, sine is an odd function, cosine is even. Now look at the graph of tangent. What do you think about tangent? Now no, remember, we, we play the same game. We look over here and say, okay, I've got a positive theta. Notice I get a positive tangent over here. Now look, if we take that theta and take the opposite of it, what value of tangent do we get? Do we get positive or negative? Negative, that's right. So what do you say? Is tangent even or odd? Yeah, it's odd. So we would say this, that tangent of negative theta is equal to negative tangent of theta. Okay, now the next thing, the next set of identities we want to look at are known as the Pythagorean identities. And we've already looked at one of these Pythagorean identities, the one involving sine and cosine. But there are others. There are two more. Uh, there's one involving tangent and secant and one involving cotangent and cosecant. So let's look at these uh, Pythagorean identities. And uh, we'll start off just reminding ourselves of something. Remember on the unit circle and uh, that we've been studying, the unit circle, of course, the equation for the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's the, you know, that's the equation that gives us this circle. Now, also remember that we defined cosine to be the x-coordinate, and we defined sine to be the y-coordinate. Now, keep in mind that this circle has as its equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So, putting that together with the fact that sine is equal to y and cosine is equal to x, notice what this implies. The square of cosine, so cosine squared theta, plus sine squared theta, that must also equal 1. So this is our first Pythagorean identity. Sine squ uh, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can build from what we know. We know sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now, what we want to do, and this is something we do constantly in trig and in mathematics in general, we start with a, something basic. We, we make one observation and then we say, well, what does that imply? Now, we've studied some things so far. We've, we've learned about this Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, but we also have some other identities. We know that sine can be replaced by 1 over cosecant, right? So if I have sine, any time I see sine theta, it equals 1 over cosecant. So I can make that substitution. So I do. I'm just going to replace sine squared theta with 1 over cosecant uh, squared theta. And that's fine. Because they're equal... And when they're equal, that gives us a right to substitute. Any questions about that? But you still have to square it. That's right. You still have to square it. So 
if we have sine squared uh, theta, we replace it with 1 over cosecant squared theta. Now, I'm going to uh, go to the next step, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear my denominator. In other words, I'm going to multiply through by secant squared theta. Now notice, I multiplied every term by secant squared theta. So notice, I had 1 over secant squared theta there. I, I multiplied it by 1 over secant squared theta in the first term. In the second term, notice I had cosine squared theta. I multiplied that by secant squared theta. A and on the other side, I multiplied 1 by secant squared theta. Now, I'd been saying secant. We, it was cosecant squared theta. We multiplied every term by cosecant squared theta. Any questions? Okay, now, notice what happens here. Let's just make an observation. In this first term, notice we have 1 over cosecant squared theta times cosecant squared theta. Well, those will divide out. So I should get a 1 right there. I should get a 1 there. Now, so this first term is going to be a 1. Now, the second term, notice I've got cosecant squared theta times I mean, cosine squared theta times cosecant squared theta. Well, what if I write cosecant squared theta as 1 over sine squared theta? Let's look at that and see what we have. Now, does everybody see what I've done? All I've done is written, the, well, the first term is 1. The second term, I've got the cosecant, I mean, cosine squared theta times 1 over sine squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Now, let me just ask you a question here. What is cosine squared theta over sine squared theta? What is, first of all, what is cosine over sine? Cosine theta over sine theta. What, what is it? Cotangent. Cotangent, that's right. So notice what we have here. The first term is 1. The second term is cotangent squared theta. And on the other side is cosecant squared theta. This is our second Pythagorean identity. I mean, it's not officially the second one. It's just the second one we've noticed. There's, there's three of them. This is the second one we've looked at. So we notice this. 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. And there's one more Pythagorean identity that we're going to look at. Okay, let's go to the next Pythagorean identity, the last one. And we're going to take the same approach. We want to, instead of replacing the sine with 1 over cosecant, we want to replace the cosine with 1 over secant. Okay? Now, what would you suggest I do next? That's right. Multiply everything by secant squared theta. So it's the same old routine. So the first term, sine squared theta by secant squared theta. One and, and then a 1 over secant squared theta by secant squared theta. And then, of course, 1 times secant squared theta. Now, we make the same observation this time. Notice the second term. The second term, we have secant squared theta over secant squared theta. Well, of course, that's 1. And so this second term is going to be 1. But look at the first term. Sine squared theta times secant squared theta. What would you suggest I do with that secant squared theta? 1 over, one over that's right, 1 over cosine squared theta. So let's see what we've got. Now, so we've multiplied by secant squared theta. Now let's see if we can rewrite it. So, so just like you suggested, I've got sine squared theta times 1 over cosine squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Now, that's right. Secant squared theta over cosine squared theta is tangent squared theta. So behold the third trigonometric, I mean the third Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta.
So here we have the here we have the Pythagorean identities. We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We have cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared theta. And we have tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Those are the three Pythagorean identities that we're going to be using. Any questions about that? 